Hi everyone, it's Rishi Agarwal, and today we're going to be talking about the secondary pulmonary lobule. And this is a very important unit of lung for radiologists. And the reason why is if you know the anatomy of the secondary pulmonary lobule, you'll be able to discern a lot of things that you see on chest CT. So what is a secondary pulmonary lobule? Well, the definition is the smallest unit of lung that is covered by a connective tissue layer. Okay, so let's delve in and talk about the components that make up the secondary pulmonary lobule. But first I want to just point out that there is something called a primary pulmonary lobule, which is not very important for radiologists. So you might hear me refer to the secondary pulmonary lobule as just a pulmonary lobule or lobule, and all of those terms are really interchangeable. When you're trying to learn anatomy, it's often helpful to draw out the structures and then label it. So what I've done here is I've drawn two secondary pulmonary lobules, and I've written out all of the structures. So we're just going to go through and label each one. The first thing that I want to point out is the interlobular septum. So this represents the division between each individual secondary pulmonary lobule. So it's the periphery of each lobule. And the septum contains a couple important structures. One of them is the pulmonary vein, and I've drawn the pulmonary vein in red because it carries oxygenated blood back to the heart, and the second structure in the septum are lymphatics, and the lymphatics I've drawn here in green. At the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule, you have two other structures. One is the lobular bronchus, and I've drawn that right there, and the second is the pulmonary artery. And I've drawn that in blue because that is taking deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Okay, so just remember at the periphery of the, of the secondary pulmonary lobule, you have pulmonary veins and lymphatics, and at the center, you have the bronchus and the pulmonary artery. Okay, now that you know what makes up the secondary pulmonary lobule, let's take a look at a real-life example. So this is a chest x-ray of a patient who has pulmonary edema. And what's striking in this image is that there's diffuse reticulation in both lungs. The patient also happened to have aspirated a coin, which is completely incidental. But let's take a look at the lower left part of the lung and see what we can figure out. So what you could see is that at the periphery of the lung, there's these multiple short lines that are horizontal and seem to um, originate at the pleural surface. And these are what's known as curly B lines. And if you remember from physiology, what goes on in pulmonary edema is that you have an increase in hydrostatic pressure in the pulmonary veins. So what you're looking at here is interlobular septal thickening due to engorgement of the pulmonary veins from fluid overload, okay? So if we take a CT of this same patient, what you could see are these thickened lines at the periphery of the secondary pulmonary lobule. And this is analogous to a curly B line on chest x-ray, but what you're seeing is interlobular septal thickening. Okay, so let's see what else we can identify from the secondary pulmonary lobule. So let's take this one right here. First of all, we have this vessel in the center of the secondary pulmonary lobule. That is going to be the pulmonary artery, and we've already identified the pulmonary vein here. There's also lymphatics here at the periphery of the secondary pulmonary lobule. What we can't really see too well is the bronchial, because the bronchial is going to be a little bit too small in this patient to recognize. Okay, so this is just one application of the secondary pulmonary lobule in a real-life case. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about the distribution of diffuse pulmonary nodules in the lungs and the differential of that. So it's really important to know the lobular anatomy because the differential is based on where those nodules fit in relation to the secondary pulmonary lobule. Okay, so if you want more information on this topic, I really highly recommend that you read this article from Radiology from Richard Webb. It talks all about the secondary pulmonary lobule. Okay, if you have any questions about the secondary pulmonary lobule, feel free to uh, leave a comment on this video, or you can direct message me on the About page of this YouTube channel. Thanks a lot.